Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to continue our video series where we try to recreate beautiful Flutter UIs with step-by-step -step explanation. Last week we created this first page of the design. Today we are going to work on this one. So basically, when a user taps on one of those project folders, it will open this page. I have already gone ahead and created this page here and also added this class, which is a stateful widget that has this folder name property, which represents the name of the folder that will be tapped by the user. And here we have the build method with an empty scaffold. Now let's go back to the first page and add a gesture detector on this container to allow the user to navigate to the second page. Let's change the return type of this method to any widget and on tap, we will call the navigator of context.push to navigate to the project page that I showed you earlier and pass in the folder name. Now, if we tap on this chat box project, it will open the second page, which is blank for now. So let's start creating this page. But before we do, one thing that we can notice is that this page has a lot of things in common with this team folder page that we created last week. I will put the link to this video in the description below. Now let's start with this header section. But first, let's add a background color to the scaffold and a column for the body. Now, since we have already created a header similar to this in the team folder page, let's go back here and select this container which represents the header, copy it and paste it here. Now we just need to replace the blue background color by a gray background, change the text widget in the column and finally adapt those two icon buttons here. For the first icon, change the color and the opacity of the container in the background. And for the second one, change the color, the opacity, and then the icon itself. I think we are done with the header. Now let's move to this section. One thing that we can assume here is that this list is scrollable on the horizontal axis. So for that, we'll come here under the container for the header and add the list view. And as expected, we got this error. And to fix it, normally we will tend to use an expanded widget. But since in this case, we will be scrolling on the horizontal axis, we just need to set a fixed height for the list view using a size box or a container. Let's give it a height of 130. Now let's hot restart and the error should be gone. To create the items in the list, we'll use a column and inside this column, we will add a circle avatar with an image in the background, then a text widget. Let's do that right now. For the background, we will use image that asset and pass in the path of the image. And since the background takes an image provider, we have to add that image at the end. We will use the size box widget to add some space then the text widget for the name. The avatar image is too small. Let's fix that using the radius property of the circle avatar. It is in the middle because the list view by default is set to scroll vertically. To move it to the left, we just have to set the scroll direction of the list view to axis horizontal. Now we need to add some paddings. For that, we'll come here, replace this size box by a container so that we can use the padding property of the container. And since we only need paddings at the top and at the left, we will use the agent set only left 25 top 25. Now to create the other items in the list, we will come here and extract this column in a method. We will call it build avatar. Let's create the parameters, a string for the name and another one for the file name. Let's replace them in the method. Now we can come here, put the correct values and duplicate the method.
Now we need to add some space between the items. For that, we could come here and use the size box widget between the methods. But a better approach is to warp this column here with a padding. We need to change the return type of this method to widget. We will only set the padding to the right of each item. To finish with this section, we need to add this line under the list view. For that, we will come here under this container and add a divider widget. Now we can move to this section. And again, we will assume that this section is scrollable. That means we will come here under the divider and add a list view. And since we are adding a list view inside the column, we have this error again. And to fix it this time, since we are planning to scroll on the vertical axis, we just need to wrap the list view with an expanded widget. Hot restart and the error is gone. Now for this line, it's pretty straightforward. We just need to add a row and two text widget inside of it. Let's do that right now. To add some space between the two texts, we'll use the main axis alignment property of the row and set it to main axis alignment space between. And for some paddings, we'll use the padding property of the list view and set it to edge and set all 25. Now for those items, we have already created something similar in part 1 of this series. So instead of creating everything from scratch, we'll come here and copy this container. Before we paste it, let's add some space using the size box widget. Now we can paste it. Now the only thing missing is this alert on the icon. And since it will be on top of the icon, we need to use the stack widget. For the alert, we will use a circle avatar. We'll give it a red background color and a radius of 2.5. To place it at the top right corner of the icon, we'll wrap the circle avatar with a positioned widget. Now we can set its right property to 0 and the top to 2. Now we need to add this white border around the circle avatar. There are many ways that we can do that, but for now, I will use a container. Then I'll use the decoration property of this container to give it a white background color and the padding property to add some paddings all around the circle avatar. Now the only thing left to do is to use the shape property of the box decoration to make the container rounded. Now to create those other items in the list, we just need to come here and extract this container as a method. We will call it build file row. Let's add our parameter, a string for the folder name. Let's replace it down there. Now let's duplicate the method and put the folder names. The alert should not appear on all the items in the list. To fix that, we'll come here and add a new parameter. We'll call it show alert. The idea is to show the positioned widget and its child only if show alert is true. And since the position widget is inside of a list, we just need to add if show alert here. Now we need to go back to the methods and add true for the first item and false for the other ones. Now for this bottom navigation bar, we have already created it in part 1. So we just need to come here, copy this piece of code and paste it there under the column inside the scaffold. To remove this error, we just need to come here and create this selected index state variable. Everything seems to work very well. We can scroll and navigate between the pages. So I think we've successfully completed this design. Don't hesitate to put in the comment below if you see an error or something that you would do differently. If you made it so far, please give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.